Manitowoc man bound over for trial and boy's death. Two Rivers man charged in Sheboygan sexual assault. Le legislature considers homelessness initiatives. These stories and much more coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Friday, February 22, 2019. A Two Rivers man is facing felony sexual assault charges for trying to get a resident of Sheboygan County Mental Health Facility to have sex with him. Andrew Schmalling was charged after the woman told detectives that she was assaulted in his car after he had promised her a ride to work. Court documents say a week before the assault, she had started getting text messages from Schmalling. And when she got into his car, he drove to a secluded location, parked the car, and began to pressure her to have sex with him. The victim says he threatened her, telling her that he could get her children taken away from her and he could have her kicked out of the treatment facility, reminding her that he was an active law enforcement recruit and no one would believe her story because she is a junkie. After the assault, Schmalling said he couldn't tell anyone because it would negatively impact his police schooling. When investigators became involved, they found text messages that confirmed the assault with an apology from Schmalling. He then crashed his car on I-43 and sent a message saying that he had done it on purpose because he wanted to kill himself. Schmalling is facing up to 40 years in prison if he is found guilty. A man charged with felony murder for the death of seven-year-old Ethan Hoschultz was in Manitowoc County Court this week, and he has been ordered to stand trial. Timothy Hoschultz appeared for his preliminary hearing and will be back in court in March for his arraignment. The 48-year-old faces a total of nine charges, including intentionally contributing to the delinquency of a child causing death. His son, Damien, who is 15, faces six counts, including first-degree reckless homicide. The mother, 36-year-old Tina McKeever Hoschultz, is charged with failing to prevent bodily harm. The criminal complaint says the child la died last April after being forced to carry around a log that weighed more than he did in the family's backyard. He was also hit, kicked, and repeatedly shoved into the ground and then was buried in a snowbank. A man found with explosives in his Madison apartment is now charged with planning an attack on the University of Wisconsin-Madison campus. Brian Camper, Campbell entered a no-contest plea Wednesday to second-degree reckless endangerment and possession of improvised explosives. Authorities say Campbell had searched the internet for instructions on making explosives and drew maps of tunnels on the university's campus to identify where the bombs might be placed. Under a plea deal, prosecutors will request three years in prison, and the judge has discretion to ignore that agreement. A sentencing memorandum prepared for the judge says Campbell was angry because of an incident in 2016 where he choked another student at the UW Sailing Club. The memo notes that Campbell's computer password was McVeigh, a reference to Oklahoma City bomber Timothy McVeigh. Kenosha Tremper High School cheerleading coach will not be handing out gag awards next month following accusations of body shaming and sexual harassment. And the American Civil Liberties Union say they may file a lawsuit over similar award ceremonies from the past years. Following a nearly year-long investigation, the ACLU notified the Kenosha Unified School District of concerns by parents and a former coach that the awards presented at last year's cheerleading banquet included such titles as Big Booty, Big Booby, and String Bean. According to a letter to the district obtained by the Kenosha News, Tremper Principal Steve Necht had 
previously been made aware that the event was given out such awards for at least the last five years. The ACLU report from the group's Women's Rights Project concludes that the GAG Awards created a hostile environment through harassment and body shaming. The ACLU is also looking into a separate complaint from Kenosha Bradford High School where teachers suggested during a health lesson that sexual assault victims are sometimes partly to blame for their attacks. Assembly Republicans have introduced a package of legislation aimed at keeping people housed. It would double annual state funding for direct housing assistance, aiding, adding about $4 million. Carla Thien's executive director for Porch Light in Madison says they would like to attain functional zero on homelessness. That does not mean that no one will ever become homeless. What it means is that our system will be the right size to adequately address homelessness when it does occur. Thien said, we have to do everything that we can to keep families housed so that our time and resources can be utilized for those sleeping in emergency shelters and sleeping on the streets. The Madison press conference was held at Porchlight's men's shelter at Grace Episcopal Church directly across from the street of Capitol. There are no Democrats in attendance to discuss the, what Representative John Plumer called a bipartisan issue. The Republicans have spent a lot of the last year working on this topic, said Plumer, and I would love to have someone here, but I will tell you it is a bipartisan issue. Governor Tony Evers has appointed himself to lead the state's panel on homelessness, replacing former Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Kleefish. Governor Tony Evers, picked to head the State Department of Transportation, says more revenue is needed. Craig Thompson told members of the state's Senate's Transportation Committee that despite efforts to stretch dollars, conditions on our state highway system continue to decline. Thompson, whose appointment must be approved by the full Senate, says another $360 to $400 million is needed every two years just to maintain the current conditions. And tolling is not an immediate solution. We are somewhat limited in our ability to fix what I think is today's problem with our system through tolling, Thompson said. Governor Evers is expected to act on recommendations put forward by a task force he has appointed, which includes Thompson. And finally, Chris Middleton's three-pointer with 32.5 three, thir seconds left broke a 95 all tie as the Bucks beat the Boston Celtics 98-97 in Milwaukee on Thursday night. Middleton finished with 15 points and 13 rebounds as Milwaukee ran its league winning record to 44 to 14. Giannis Antetokounmpo had 30 points, 13 boards and 6 assists in the win. Kiri Irving led Boston with 22 points but missed a desperation drive at the buzzer. Al Horford said had 21 points, 17 rebounds, and 5 assists for the Celtics, who fell to 37-22. to The Bucks entertained the Timberwolves on Saturday night. And that is all we have for today. Join me again next week for another recap of our local news on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.